Learn about the future of the money today. Neocashradio.com, hey, hey. A buddy of mine was recently wondering, Dave, why do you play DOS games? Well, the answer is actually Liberty related. That's why it goes on the Ridley Report. Yes, there is the aspect that DOS games can be played much more cheaply than other kinds. Some of them are available for free, some of them are available for low, low prices. But the more I play some of these gems from the 90s, the more I realize there's another reason why I do it. When I play a 1990s game, it's sort of my way of mourning the lost past, the innocence of that decade. In the sounds of a primitive MIDI file, or the poor graphics of an alien legacy game. Let me rephrase, let me rephrase that. The poor graphics of a dynamics game, or a microprose masterpiece. In these, I hear and see our lost world. And to you it might mean nothing. To me it almost chokes me up. When I play XCOM, I'm, I'm transported back to 1996. And of course I'm talking about the original XCOM that came out in 1994. I bought it in 96 originally. It's like being able to jump into your youth. To a day when we had the luxury of complaining about how bored we were. Or of focusing our attention on abusive foreign governments. When Amnesty International techniques were something you deployed against overseas dictators or genocidal militias with Russian-sounding names. That age of relative innocence for Americans, it's all gone. Now for many of us, the simulations have been replaced by reality. Now instead of imaginary, desperate battles for our freedom, we have to fight them for real. The fight isn't violent yet, but the struggles at state houses, inside political parties, and outside court buildings... Our struggles for lives hang uh, hang in the balance. And maybe I'm being generous to our foes when I say that the fights are not violent. They are violent. It's just that our liberty folk aren't the ones doing the violence. Back in the days when you booted up your 386 and played a game of Red Baron with its maximum 10 aircraft per scenario... You took for granted the fact that you were playing from a secure, safe location, that you weren't on anyone's list. Your political activities were not going to make you a target for forced induction into a prison labor system. The temperature of the air right outside your home was not going to be monitored to determine if you might be using a suspicious amount of electricity. Your emails if you had email, weren't going to be monitored. Wins and losses by your local congressman weren't going to have much direct effect on your life. Neither was your city council or your state government. And if it was, at least in those days, you had the luxury of not noticing. Now, in this post-red pill world that so many of us are waking up in, Our struggle for survival is more real than it is a game. And it will get more real before it gets to be a game again. Before we can sit down and enjoy our wheeze and our post-wheeze with the same innocence that we once enjoyed the first Duke Nukem or Doom or Air Warrior. Maybe this myth of the 90s, or this dream of the 90s, as they call it, is just a myth, is just a dream. Maybe we lived under a tyranny then, too, and just didn't notice because we hadn't hooked in to each other. But the way I felt then, and the way many of you felt then, was real. We felt safe and secure. We thought we were free that we always would be, and that the terrible things unfolding on our 25-pound, $500 monitors would always remain there 
or would confine themselves to tiny far-off countries with exotic names and tribal histories. Just once, to be able to look into a machine like that again and feel that way again. At the forefront of currency innovation, the Neocash Radio Podcast. Drop by for the latest cryptocurrency talk. Their audio format means you can stay up to bit date while you're driving. Learn about the future of money today. Neocashradio.com. Hey, hey.